The finals just got an update on those future cosmetics. We also have a brand new dev AMA that's coming up. We have some potential brand new marketing that might be happening for the finals. We also have some potential theories around the new mode, Terminal Attack. We also have some potential stealth changes from patch 2.6 and a whole bunch more. What's up world, it's Utopia back in with another video. Today we're checking out all things the final. Okay, so first up, we do have that brand new dev AMA. Now this is actually happening through the subreddit. The reason why this is so unique is the subreddit and the Discord as well as Embark have not always been on good terms. There has been some variance there with that, so finally it looks like the subreddit and the Discord as well as Embark are actually working together on this. So we have this pinned post here saying that there is an AMA with Embark Studios Rob Runson, who is the CCO of the finals and also the co-founder of it, as well as Gustav Teleby, who is the creative director for the finals at Embark. We went on here to say that the moderators are pleased to announce that the AMA with these lovely developers at Embark will be happening on the finals on May 8th. Now they do use military time here, however it is 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. EST, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. CST, as well as 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. PST. There's the time conversions down below. I'll leave a time conversion calculator if you want to use that as well. And of course, on this Reddit post, you can look at all the times there. And they did go on to say that this announcement post is meant to serve as a documented guideline for the subreddit users who plan to engage and ask questions in the AMA. Of course, they said to remember to be respectful and civil during the interactions. They do go on here to say that please keep your initial questions as short and specific as possible. Further discussion and discourse can be nuanced or expanded on as needed. Of course, they did go on here to say keep everything self-contained to the game, the community, and Embark Studios. There is no formal questions or of any transactional or tech support questions within this. All top level comments, which means essentially the starter comment and not the ones in the chain, must be questions for the AMA and must not be statements just ending with a question mark or even rhetorical questions. And of course, they did outline here that your questions may not be fully answered, but will be handled with discretion. And some of the topics can be under development, NDA, privacy, etc. And of course, no drama or I'm assuming any witch hunting, especially with cheating. They last up here went on to say that they hope the AMA does well and acts as the start of many future interactions with Embark, especially with the subreddit. Again, remember, as I said earlier, the subreddit and the Discord, as well as just Embark in general, have not been on the best terms. So hopefully this does lead to future interactions. Now, this post itself is not the AMA post, so that will be posted at a later time or date. I do assume it'll happen sometime before the AMA and not as it goes live. I'll keep you guys updated when that thread does post, so if you are posting in this thread, just know that they are not looking at this thread for the questions. This is just the announcement post, so keep all of your questions for the actual AMA post when that does go live. Again, this is a nice stepping stone for the subreddit, so we'll have to see on how this all plays out. Now, we do have an update on those future cosmetics as well as that frog onesie. So if you didn't see in my last video, they actually did have a frog onesie post, or at least a place that you could sign to get this in the actual game. Now they did achieve that thousand signatures. In fact, I think they have around 1500 at this current moment. There's been a few postings and there's also been this posting now that they are at 1500, but they need 10,000. There's a post here by Embark Rob over on the Discord. We said here that 3,000 signatures will get you guys a spray, 5,000 will get a charm, 7,500 will get the SFX, and 10,000 will get you an emote. So if they do get all these signatures here, they will end up making all of these assets for the game, and I think probably either in the store or future rewards. And again, this has been posted around on the subreddit as well as a lot of people talking about it in the Discord. Now, it does seem like this was meant to be a marketing ploy for newer players. As we do have this comment here over on the Discord in reply to Rob. This is from Embark Dusty who said, Rob, when I tried to sneakily engage this group in guerrilla marketing, I meant for it to bring new players into the game, not to get the current players frog swag. However, they did go on here to say that you're all very good at guerrilla marketing and that they're heavily and heartily impressed. Again, still pretty cool overall. We'll have to see if we do end up achieving that many signatures. That is quite a lot. At least there more than likely will be the frog onesie as well as potentially the spray. Although, I don't know if we're going to reach that 5,000, 7,500, and 10,000 mark signatures. Again, I will link down below to that website in the description down below. I'll also make a pinned comment to push this as hard as we possibly can. That way you guys can get some maybe potentially free cosmetics or at least additional cosmetics within the game. As we did see before with Rob, he did leak and showcase off this big spoon that we end up getting. So it seems like he's pretty tied up with the actual cosmetic team. Definitely cool to see some dev interactions, especially with the cosmetic and marketing team. With moving on, we do potentially have some new marketing strategies. Recently, we did have Jack Frags put out a video for the finals. He is one of the bigger YouTubers that sometimes comes in and makes videos. He was also there with the private event. Now, some people think that Jack Frags was potentially sponsored or even paid to make this video. 
However, if you are sponsored or even paid to make a video, you do have to disclose that in the top right normally of a YouTube video. There isn't a sponsorship segment or a sponsorship notation in the top right, so he probably more than likely did not get paid for this video and just made it on his own terms. It's nice to see some bigger YouTubers get on this game and definitely will help the marketing strategy overall. He's made videos with the finals before, so I do think he actually enjoys this game quite well. And again, it seems like he was not sponsored or paid for this video as he didn't disclose it in the video itself. And there's supposed to even be a notation in the top right when they do disclose that, which there wasn't to my knowledge. So this was actually just a video by Jack Frey that he wanted to make. Again, good to see some bigger YouTubers picking that up, so hopefully we do have some more of that in the future. We also have some weird stuff around the terminal attack mode. Now again, it looks like this limited time mode is ending in 15 days. However, we have this post here where somebody looked on the official Embark website and found they made an official icon for terminal attack. They asked if this maybe confirms that this might be becoming a permanent mode. However, this more than likely could just be a placeholder for the potential of it being a permanent mode or even it coming back at a later date. Some people say here they're very confident in it becoming a permanent mode mode. As I said here, they want that data for Season 3, and potentially that becomes a permanent playlist with Season 3. Some do think this might actually become a permanent playlist in the competitive mode. However, others obviously think this might just be tied with the patch and some promotion stuff, as it could be like previous events where they do become restricted or even shelved, like kind of even how like Fortnite does it. We'll have to wait and see. I'm sure this will go on a bunch of feedback, as well as how well the playlist is doing with player count. We also might have had a potential stealth nerf or stealth change with patch 2.6. Now, currently it seems like dagger players are having a bit of issue with 2.6.0. Now, currently, we do have a player on the Discord who is placed number 80. Apparently, they are the best dagger user. They go by the name of KO Whale. And apparently, they've gone over some discussion. There's also a post on this Reddit page. Where they talk about that you need to lock in the same direction of the victim from the start to the finish for that 320 damage to actually activate. Many people have been complaining about the dagger in the Discord as well. We also have a comment here by KO Whale over on the Discord who said, would love a dev to address the silent gutting of the dagger. So, currently, it does seem like there is some maybe hit reg change there or at least when there is a change with the actual dagger animation maybe it's akin again to the hitbox maybe it's akin to the hit registration maybe there is something along the lines with that but it does seem like you will need to actually aim at the player the entire time at their back in order to get that 320 damage to actually activate there's also this video over on the subreddit kind of showcasing what is happening there I'll link to it down below. It is a bit odd with that, so we'll have to see if they actually did change anything. Again, maybe that's down to just hit reg stuff or any latency issues. Although, if one of the top dagger players is saying that there's some issues there, more than likely there is. So hopefully the devs do address that change. Maybe, again, it is some networking stuff or there isn't even a change with the dagger itself. Overall, that should about cover for today's video. If you like it, like it, and subscribe. And until the next one, deuces.